This year, I watched these coils cost multiple people with multiple cars, with multiple tuners, with multiple ECUs, north of $50,000. So if you've ever considered running these coils or you are running these coils, you might wanna check this one out. All right, I wanna be real clear here. In no way, shape or form, am I trying to take business from anybody or badmouth anybody or any of that good stuff. When you see a problem once, it's very easy to think it's a fluke, installation error, maybe over dwelled them or something like that. But when you see it numerous times, it gets to the point where you sort of have this moral obligation where you feel like you need to inform people and let them know. When you see the amount of time, money, and frustration uh, that these coils have cost people that I know and even, you know, personal friends of mine, again, you feel obligated to just say something. It's kind of like when cars come to the dyno and they have a one quart catch can mounted directly in front of the front tire. I feel morally obligated to let them know that at some point in time, if a motor lets go, that's going to cause them to crash the car. Probably one out of a thousand people actually do something about it, but at least if I let them know and let them make their own choice based off of what I've seen more times than I care to admit, falls in their court. And uh, again, I, I can at least get it off of my chest that I did the right thing and I let them know. This coil situation is no different. It's easy to think that all these coils are the same since they all look identical. But if you've ever searched around for pricing on these, you'll see that they're drastically different between manufacturers and they're definitely not all created equal. I think these are a lot like fuel injectors. There's a huge market for them. It seems like everybody's using them and each new place that comes out with their coils just sells them cheaper than the next guy. There's definitely cheap Chinese knockoffs out there. Let's take a look. Okay, here is Holly's version. You see they're right about $100 a piece. So for a V8, you're looking at 800 bucks and that's a lot of money for coils. So I totally understand why people would want to shop around. Now, I actually didn't even know this until basically right now, but uh, Summit and Jags actually have their own version of these now. Uh, you can see they're significantly cheaper. There's Summit's version, like 70 bucks, so like $500 for the set. So that's like a $300 savings right there. I can't speak for these because I've never used them, but I'd be willing to bet a couple of dollars that uh, the manufacturer that we've been having problems with, I guarantee they're all like, I don't know if these ones specifically, but I guarantee you there's other manufacturers that are using the same coil and just putting their logo on it. Go here to Carter Motorsports. Uh, these ones specifically are the ones that we've had problems with. Now, before seeing that Summit and Jags were offering these things now, uh, 65 bucks for these coils was the cheapest that we found. So roughly $30 cheaper than say the Holly coils. Uh, so when you need eight of them, that's a pretty significant difference. And then just to compare to something else, if we look at the race grade coils that look identical, they're $125 a piece. And for what it's worth, I don't think I've ever seen the race grade branded coils on anything that wasn't running Motec. That's usually where you find the race grade branded stuff. Now going back to the Carter Motorsports, again, less than $500 for all eight. And as I was looking at their site, I did notice this, which if this is actually true, then there's going to be a lot of people potentially running into problems. It says that they've sold way more than they planned for Black Friday. So it uh, sounds like they're moving a decent amount of these things. Story time. We're gonna go over a couple of different cars that had essentially the exact same problem, but totally different. Let me explain. Okay, so first thing first, we're gonna send brand new coil and then multiple of the coils that we had problems with over to Shane T and he's gonna bench test them and one, uh, see what the difference is between a brand new one and one that has problems. And probably more importantly is figure out exactly what the problems are that are causing uh, all of the issues with these. All right, so the first car had these coils on it for a couple of years, probably a hundred passes on them, million dyno pulls, the works, uh, everything was totally fine. Then just out of the blue, uh, the thing tried to bazooka the cylinder head off of it, torch the head, gas gets gone. It was pretty ugly and there was no real logical explanation as to why uh, we've been running that car that way for a really long time and why it decided to just kind of tear itself up was sort of odd. But what was interesting is after repairing it, uh, just all hell broke loose after that. So they had the heads on and off this things a bunch of times, actually tried different blocks. Originally, it just seemed like it was a cylinder head ceiling issue because after the first uh, catastrophic uh, failure, uh, the rest of them were just like pushing water and, and pretty minor things. What was different from this one and the next one I'm gonna talk about is no matter what we did, the spark plug, looked like it had never run before in terms of how much heat it had in it. Granted, we had pulled a bunch of timing out, put a bunch of timing in. Uh, and then the other thing that was interesting is it was really down on power, but considering the way the spark plugs looked, kind of made sense. 
Um, but to put it into perspective how bad this was, it was a known engine builder that literally everybody around here uses, a good friend of mine. Uh, we talked a hundred different times about it. And this thing at three pounds of boost uh, would get to probably five, 6,000 RPM and uh, coolant pressure would spike and coolant would fly everywhere. So after trying everything under the sun, what the fix ultimately ended up being, which we sort of thought was maybe a Hail Mary uh, kind of attempt to fix it, uh, took the Carter Motorsports coils off put a set of holly coils on it, put it back on the dyno. Not only did coolant pressure not spike, the horsepower went back up. And once we put the timing back in it that we kind of conservatively pulled out, uh, the, the power went up even further. So it was both like a big relief to finally fix it, uh, but also kind of frustrating that a simple part or parts, I guess, if there's eight of them, uh, could cause so many problems uh, and headaches. These are 50% off. Black Friday. So got one for the house and one for the shop. So as you can probably imagine, after you run into a problem like that, you start researching it, talking to people. That's when you kind of find out that you're not alone. And a bunch of time went by and we had another car that almost the same thing. Uh, this thing runs mid fours. And uh, this one, I wasn't tuning, a good friend of mine was. And out of the blue, this thing just never has any mechanical problems or anything like that. But out of the blue, it has a like catastrophic uh, head gasket failure once again. And uh, I think after that, they wanted to redo some stuff to the car anyway. So they rewired it uh, thinking maybe, you know, that would take care of some things, whatnot, and get everything back together running. Um, and then same problem, just pushes another head gasket. So this kind of went back and forth, trying a, a few different things. And then ultimately a little earlier than expected, they decided to convert the car over to Motec. Uh, that was kind of the, the plan anyways. This just sort of accelerated it. At that point, the car gets rewired again, gets a whole new ECU, and you kind of think that anything that's going on, because it, it really acts like a, almost like a wiring problem on this particular car. And this particular coil problem is different. I mean, like everybody's experience, a car's misfiring and you suspect it's plug wires or coils or whatever, and you swap them over and the misfire goes away. This is totally different. Uh, the cars sound perfectly normal maybe a little lazier than normal, but uh, everything is good. Now, what's interesting with this is put Motec on the car, put it back on the dyno. I think the least amount of boost this thing will make is seven, eight pounds, whatever it is, make somewhere around a thousand-ish, is kind of what it should make at that boost level. Uh, but this go around, it's making like 700 horsepower, which is just kind of unacceptable for that particular car. And uh, what's different, well, I said the, the problems are very similar, but different, is when you pulled the spark plugs out of this car, uh, they look like they were five, seconds away from just totally melting all of the straps off. And I guess I should add at one point in time before the the last time before swapping ECUs and the whole wiring, the whole nine, a uh, one dyno pull, low boost, it literally melted the straps off of all eight plugs. And this is a combination that this particular tuner tunes every single day. And he's been tuning this car for years and years. So it's not like they just missed on the tune up and wiped all the plugs out. Like something clearly had changed. So car comes back to the dyno with Motec on it, kind of baby stepping into it. And uh, uh, basically realized that same thing, low boost, plugs look awful, things down on power. Uh, for whatever reason, I thought this car had holly coils on all along, but the way the coils were mounted, you couldn't really see what they were. And I just got this wild hair at my butt to kind of get down and look up under the car and look at the coils. And I saw that they were same Carter Motorsports coil. So uh, my buddy's remote tuning it. So I let him know kind of where I was at. He'd never dealt with these particular coils either. He also thought the car had holly coils on it. And to make a long story short, the owner of the car, uh, went and borrowed a set of uh, actual holly coils from buddy of his, uh, put those on the car, uh, literally didn't even hook the laptop back up. So nothing changed, timing didn't change, coiled well didn't change, nothing. No changes whatsoever, made the exact same pull. The car sounded significantly better and it picked up 300 horsepower. And from there, I uh, could just turn the thing all the way up. I forget how much power it made. I think they stopped at a couple thousand. The setup should make probably over three, I would imagine. And went to the track, thing runs personal best and uh, everything is, you know, 100% exactly the way that you would want it to be. So like I said, they were planning on switching to Motec, but, uh, and I guess you could argue some misdiagnosed, whatever the case may be, but ultimately they ended up rewiring the car twice actually. Uh, cylinder heads off the car, multiple sessions on the dyno. I can't remember if they ever took it to the track like that. I don't think that they did, but uh, as you can imagine, like uh, switching a car to Motec and uh, rewiring, it's not cheap. 
cheap. At the end of the day, all that stuff was kind of going to happen anyways, but uh, it had to happen a lot sooner uh, in an attempt to try and get this thing to run. But as you can imagine, the money is one thing, but the, the time and the frustration is probably even worse than that. So do what you want with this information. If you want to pick up cheap coils, uh, be my guest. Uh, at least I can feel good that I warned you. <laughs> uh, so you'll never see me using or messing with or doing anything other than running far, far away from uh, these knockoff coils. Uh, it's just not worth the headache for anybody. And we all know how it goes when you have problems like this, it always gets dumped onto the tuner's shoulders either to figure it out and fix it or they just get blamed for it entirely. So once uh, Shane tests these coils, if there's any noteworthy information that we find out about this, and surprisingly, he sound just as interested to test them as I was in having him test them. So if uh, there's any information to uh, be kind of concluded from the testing, then I'll make another video with an update. But as for now, uh, I've warned you, if you decide to move forward with, I would say any of the cheap coils, if I wouldn't be willing to take the risk, but these Carter Motorsports coils specifically, I can't recommend them to anybody. Now I'm sure there's gonna be tons of people in the comments telling me that they've had uh, great luck with these coils, which is fine. And even in my experience, they've worked seem to be just fine until they didn't. And since the problems that I've seen with these are what I've actually witnessed with my own eyes, it's not necessarily up for debate. It's what I've actually seen. So I guess at the end of the day, in my eyes, saving $300 to potentially cost yourself thousands just isn't worth it. I know me personally, I'd rather spend a little bit of extra money just for the peace of mind, if nothing else.